glory to God. Let's receive. Let's receive. I'm, I'm going to, she's just going to come and, and, and minister however Holy Spirit will lead her. And uh, will you receive our, our mother bishop, uh, our apostle? She's coming. Come on, let's thank God for her one more time. Bishop Corletta Vaughn. Can you please rise on your feet one more time for Bishop His Grace, Joseph Walker, please, please. I, I, you can do better than that. I say you can do better than that. Even better than that, I think so. Yeah, I think, I think even better than that you can do. No, I do, not just your voice, from your hands, from your heart, what just shifted in your life deserves a come on the bible says to give honor and double honor double 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 honor we honor this man of god we honor the grace that is upon his life the wisdom bishop i honor your mind people get all tangled into anointings but what i just saw was a display of a God mind and that is why we honor you in the body your mind may God keep your mind may God keep your mind thank you for good health thank you for your wisdom and your intuition in the spirit but may God of heaven keep your mind. We need your mind in this season. We need your mind to help navigate the kingdom, the church triumphantly. We need your mind. God has blessed and gifted your mind and you have invested and been intentional about your mind may God give us more leaders that think that are mindful not just spiritual but mindful and God even as he navigates for gospel put in his mind what to do put in our mind what he has spoken to us give it to us in our mind how to implement how to walk it out so Lord we thank you today we have seen the genius mind of the Holy Ghost move in a mortal man and we thank you and we give you praise for his life in Jesus mighty name come on somebody and praise God Come on, come on, hallelujah. Reshake. Satora Pamasi. Thank you, Father. We give you praise. Take your seat for just a moment. Bishop has said some things, and I'm just going to tap right in. I've learned a long time ago to find the hook. God bless all of you in Zoom and those of you that are joining us in all of our YouTube, our Facebook family. Wave at me if you love me. Wave if, even if you don't like me. Just change your mind. It's all right. I still want to tap into that. Bishop said that this is about being. This is about being and not doing. Being. Somebody said being. Say it out loud one more time. Being. I just want to share a couple of things with you that I still believe we need to focus Second Peter chapter number one, if you'll go there for a moment. Second Peter chapter number one. Second Peter chapter one. And when you get there, let me know that you are there. I am reading from the New King James Version. And again, we honor the son of my heart. Amen. Bishop William Murphy, we honor you. We honor the daughter of my heart, Danielle. We honor you. We thank God for your life and thank God for your father and your family and all that we are to one another. We thank God for that. And to the Dream Center, we love you so much, so much, so much. I want to deposit this word quickly to you. 
and tapping into this concept of being again tapping in second peter one when you get there say i'm there and if you're not there say i'm on my way second peter second peter listen to this listen to this grace and peace verse two be multiplied to you in the knowledge of god and of jesus our lord i want you to hear that grace and peace multiply to you in the knowledge of God and Jesus our Lord. I'm going to read that one more time. Grace and peace is multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and Jesus our Lord. How would you grade your knowledge of God? If you had to grade yourself as an A student or B student or uh, on a scale of 1 to 10, let's make it easy. What is your knowledge of God? Not, 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 not what you have heard, but what is your knowledge of God? What are you investing in your mind to know about God? I was with um, some Muslims uh, this during the campaign. We were with some interfaith folk. And one of the things that you cannot do is challenge them in the Quran. They know that Quran. I was driving yesterday in the, in the, in the limousine and uh, again, another Muslim was there and we were just talking and he said, I have my prayer mat right here on the front seat. He said, we pray five times a day. I said, yes, I'm aware. He said, and if I can't get to the mosque, I will pull over on the side of the road, wash my hands and my face and pray. I was convicted. I had uh, some Muslim friends to the house during the campaign and we were interfaith, faith-based leadership. And at a certain time, the imam said, Bishop, where can we pray? And they went into my prayer room and I said, will this do? They said, this is fine. Now, I can't tell you how many other denominational leaders that I've had in my home. And not one has ever asked me, where can I pray? Two things I want you to write down. If any of what Bishop Walker has said is going to happen, there are two things that you are going to have to do these first three months. You're going to have to read your Bible. Wow, what a novel idea. For the purpose of knowing it, not preaching. You're going to have to read the Bible if you are going to move into this whole process of regroup, reimagine, reset, and revival. So I want you for the first three months to do what I call immersive scripture reading. I'm going to show you how to make it all happen. Immersive. That means you're going to immerse yourself in scripture, not in the notes, not in the commentary, but just in the scripture. From Genesis to Revelations, you're going to open the Bible. Whatever your translation, whether it's New King James or New Living Translation or Revised Standard, whatever it is, not the message, you can use that as a companion. 
But I want you to get one of the authentic texts, not on your iPad. I want you for the first three months of regrouping to become literate in scripture. I want you to be able to defend, defend the Bible if you have to. I want you to be able to defend scripture. Woo, nobody says nothing. Whatever Bishop is going to say, whatever it is, it's going to come out of the word of God. Whatever it is that is going to happen in your mind, in your being, the changing, the organization of your thought, it's got to come from new information that you are about to put in, which is the hard drive of Scripture. 66 books. Don't skip a book. Okay, now, now why y'all not shouting for me? I'm feeling, I'm feeling some kind of way. I, I'm feeling some kind of way, Lachelle. Let's tell you, I'm feeling some, what needs I'm feeling some kind of way. So I'm feeling some kind of way. We want all of this to happen without knowing scripture. And grace and peace and finance and health and an organized mind is multiplied in the knowledge of God and the knowledge of Jesus Christ. So the first three months, Bishop has said, we're going to regroup. You're going to become an immersive Bible reader. For the next three months, you're not going to read any other book except the Bible. Ooh, come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're not going to read anything else except the Bible. How many of you hear what I'm saying? I need you to lift your hands if you can hear what I'm saying. Because this is going to make the transition easy. Because it's difficult when you're trying to speak from a language and you don't know the language. You, you, you've never read the full script. You've never read the full book. So when he's going to be shooting directions and he's going to be giving you the regroup, if you don't know the Bible, come on somebody, not what Hagen wrote about the Bible, not of what Copeland wrote about the Bible, not, not, not Creflo, not the Bible. The second thing you're going to do is you're going to change your prayer frequency. Bishop said you're going from 17 to 18 and you still don't have a mature prayer life. You've got to be able to touch heaven without a musician. Without Bishop prompting you. You've got to know that heaven knows your voice. And that heaven will respond to your voice. Two things if we're going to regroup. You have got to know scripture. And you have got to be frequent in prayer. Let me tell you what happened to me. I was just beginning to move into ministry and I was going through a bad period in my own life where I contemplated suicide. This is a long time ago, but I think I need to share this with you. And not only did I contemplate it, I attempted it. I was so overwhelmed. My mind was so disorganized. I was a young wife, two young children in a very bad space. 
Anybody here ever been in a bad space? Have you ever been in a bad space? Since you love the Lord, since you, have you ever been in a bad space? I'm talking about, and you were saved. And, and, and you knew about the Lord, and you, but you was in a bad space. Don't play with this, folks. Listen to me carefully. Don't play with the fact that just because you're saved, that your mind is okay. Just because you're saved don't mean your mind is all right. You can get in a bad space while you're saved. I loved God. I loved church. I didn't know the scripture. I didn't know the scripture. I knew about scriptures. I knew about preaching, but I didn't know the scriptures. After I went through that period of contemplating suicide and trying to implement it, 911 came and it wasn't 911 at the time, but the ambulance came and took me, pumped my stomach. I went through the whole process. And when I came out of that, one of the old mothers of the church got a hold of me because what they did in that time, protocol was is that if you tried to kill yourself, when they dismissed you from the hospital, if you made it, they committed you into a mental institution. So I remember being in the back of the ambulance going to a mental hospital in Detroit. And I remember them with my, with my, my, my hands tied and straight jacket. I don't know why I'm telling you all this, but you need to hear me. And when I was going through, I was laying on the gurney and I saw my mom and dad and they were saying how once they put me in and admitted me, I would not be able to get out or have visitors for about six weeks. And that terrified me because I needed to be able to see my mother and my father. My mother went and began to pray. <laughs> I remember my mother going in the corner. I could hear her praying. And while she was praying, the doctor was still writing my admittance to admit me to a mental institution because I was suicidal. And I heard my mother praying. And this is what she prayed. Lord, give her back her mind. God, give her back her mind. And I remember laying on that gurney and my mind began to come back. Listen to me. I'm telling you the truth. My mind, I was in church. I was the church musician. I was directing the choir. But I did not know the word. And so the enemy had access to my mind and my emotions. Now what? kind of value can you be if you're not in your right mind what kind of value can you be if you are struggling emotionally and you do not know how to put boundaries around those feelings with the word of God because that's the only thing that can help you be and change your mind into be is the scriptures, not sermons. Sermons don't change your mind. Sermons inspire. Scripture informs. And within about an hour, I was able to get my cognition back. They asked me certain questions and I was able to answer them. They unstrapped me, took me out of the straitjacket, and I was able to go home. And this is what my mother did every day. She set me in front of the Bible. She said, I'm going to make sure you get your mind back. And every day she would read Genesis, Exodus, until we got through the whole Bible. And she said, now let's read it again. And I could feel my mind being healed. 
no medication, no more drugs, no more therapy. She just kept reading the scriptures until I got strong enough that I could read the scriptures. We can't use people in this moment. We can't regroup with people who don't know the scriptures. I know you're excited. I, I know it's a thrill to be a member here. You know, I am a member, so I know. Oh, I am a member. But I'm telling you now that if you're going to be a part of the new thing, you're going to have to become an immersive scripture reader. You must immerse. You're emotional, but you don't know why you shout. You have got to know what God has promised, what God has said. If we're going to regroup, then we got to regroup with 100% Bible leaders. How can you lead and don't know the scriptures? That's why we become doers and not beers because we don't know the scriptures. So we only do what the assignment is calling for. But we can't be because we don't know the scriptures. And when you don't know the scriptures, your mind is open to demonic activity. You say, I rebuke the devil. I rebuke the devil. Ain't nobody going to tempt this ministry. And you'll be the very one that the enemy will use. To disrupt the house of God. Learning the scriptures is the most important thing you will ever do in this season. There is nothing else. Your money is tied to it. Your gifting is tied to it. Your availability is tied to what has God said. What does the scripture say? So when Bishop is preaching and Bishop is sharing where we're going in the vision, in the regroup, your mind immediately goes to the word of God. And faith cometh by hearing the word of God. Now, now you, you're in position to be what he needs you to be. Not do, but be. Many people are serving us. They love church. You love us. But you don't love scripture. Grace and peace is multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and Jesus our Lord. Verse 3, 2 Peter 1. As his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness. Underline this and read it out loud with me. How? How do I get all of these things? How do I participate in this divine power? How do I get access to that? Through the knowledge. Through the knowledge of him who has called us by glory and virtue. How do I get this money? How is this money? How is this favor? How are any of these things going to be attracted to me? And some of you mad right now, it's all right. Because you know you got to put some work in. You know you got to go home this month and you got to put some work in. He said the next three months is regroup. That means I got to study this Bible. I got three months to read 66 books. No commentary. No notes. Don't worry about trying to understand it. Just read it. Okay, am I, am I all right? Do you know what's going to happen in another three months? When 100% of you leaders 
have read the whole Bible, your language is going to change. Your mentality is going to change. Your responses are going to change. You're going to realize that you've been off a long time. And you're going to realize that it's not that you're not a good person. It's not that you're not in a great church, but you didn't have the scriptures as your operating system. You can't run software without an operating system. I don't know if y'all remember this, but you used to have to load those disks in the computer for your operating system. And it would say, insert disk one. And sometimes it was a hundred disks because what was it doing? It was making sure that whatever you added to it, whatever software you added, that the operating system could drive it. You cannot use the software of your gifts or the software of your talent and you don't have the right operating system. The operating system has to be scripture for Dream Center. Okay, I'm going to say it again. I said the operating system for the Dream Center has got to be the Bible. It's got to be leadership that is fully immersed in scripture. That you speak to each other in the terms of scripture. That you run what is in your hand through the scripture. That when Bishop and Mother is talking to you, you are talking back to them in the language of scripture. Not in your feelings, not in your emotions, not in your opinions, but in the scripture. Notice how you're quiet. Do you realize that 75% of people who call themselves Christians have never read the Bible from cover to cover? It says that we will increase in all things of life and godliness through the knowledge of him by which have been given to us exceeding great and precious promises. Would you underline that or would you mark that whatever you're reading from today that you have these exceedingly great and precious promises that through these promises you may be partakers, listen to this, of the divine nature. Having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. And for this very reason, giving all diligence, add to your faith. The first thing you add is virtue. The second thing you add to your faith is knowledge. And then to knowledge you add what? Self-control. Good God Almighty. And then to self-control, you add what? Perseverance. And then to perseverance, you add what? Godliness. And to godliness, you add what? Brotherly kindness. And to brotherly kindness, you add what? Love. Let's read verse 8 together. For if these things are yours and abound, you will neither be barren nor unfruitful. In the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. I'm going to release this word over you. This is what's going to organize your mind. This is what's going to organize your being. We can lay hands on you until, the, un, until next year this time. It won't change. What's going to change is the information you're getting ready to put in your mind. When long after that. Thank the Lord. The Lord healed my mind. Gave me access to the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I began to study the scriptures for myself. And one morning the Lord woke me up and said, I want you to know me. I said, God, I know you. He said, you don't know me. You know about me. But you don't know me. I said, Lord, I thought I know you. He said, you don't know me. He said, you remember the time your mother read the scripture? You, yes. He said, you've gotten away from it. You know how many preachers don't read the Bible? They read it to preach. But they don't read the Bible. That's why there is a conflict between what they do and what they be. 
That's why you can show up one way and do. You can preach the horns off of Billy Goat. That's old school. You can preach until the horses foam at their mouth, but you can't live it. Because the scriptures are not your operating system. I said, well, God, what should I do? He said, go to the Bible bookstore and get you a fresh Bible without notes. I went into the bookstore and I got a Bible. I bought two. I said, no notes. God said, no commentary, no annotation, nothing. And they gave me two books. And the next morning I started reading. And I read every day. And every day that I had a moment, I read the Bible. Within about four months, I had read the entire Bible. God said, read it again. I said, what? He said, read it again and don't take any notes. Don't look up definitions. Just read. So I would sit on the floor at the foot of the bed. I would take the girls to school and all I would do is read. This time I read a little faster. Things got a little bit more fluid. And within about two months, I had read. I said, whoa. Whew, glad I'm done. Holy Spirit said, read it again. <laughs> Year one. He said, read it again. Year two. January. I start reading. I said, Lord, am I finished yet? He said, read it again. That entire year two, all I did every day was just read the scripture. Just read the scripture. Year three. He said, read it again. No notes. No commentary. Just the scripture. Read it again. Year four. He said, read it again. Year five. By this time, you had many people on the radio, Marilyn Hickey and the guy from England, Arkansas, and all Charles Capps, and they were on. He said, turn it off and read. Turn them off and read. Year five, read every day. Year six, read the same two little Bibles. But now I'm noticing that I have a grasp on God. Year six, he said, read it again. All the way to the end of year seven, I read the scripture every day. At the end of it, he said, close it. He said, I have reformatted your mind. I haven't had a depressed day since then. <laughs> I haven't contemplated suicide or craziness since then. Anger and offense. I saw how vile it was in the scripture. And he said, you are unoffendable. You cannot be offended. You cannot hold anger. You cannot be angry. After seven years... Of daily immersing myself in the scripture. God said I have reformatted your mind. So I realize. That I see the text very differently than most. I don't go for emotions. I understand that God is trying to put knowledge in our mind. And this is the one area that we have been negligent as leaders. We want to put it in our spirit, but we don't have the knowledge of the word of God in our minds. He said, if you will add knowledge to your virtue, to your faith, you will never fail. Let me tell you what Bishop needs. He needs leaders. 
that don't fail. You've got to close your margin of error. You've got to close your margin of error. Listen, in this next season, just saying, oh man, Bishop, I'm sorry, I made a mistake, won't be good enough because of the collateral damage. As leaders of the church, you have to know the manual. If we walked you through a scripture detection center right now, And we could detect how much scripture do you really know? Would you be in leadership tomorrow? You know, you walk through the airport and they want to know if you got a gun. I want to know if you got the word. What are you leading from? Where are you? What are you leading from? What is your operating system if you're not leading from Scripture? You have to be word fed and spirit led. You want to be spirit led, but not word fed. You have to have both Scripture and the Spirit. If you're going to lead in this regroup. And I don't know about you, but I, I want to be a part of this. I, I don't want to be eliminated because I'm ignorant of scripture. I don't want to be here just because he liked me. I want to be an asset. I don't want to just wait for him to tell me what to do. I want God to begin to speak to me and bring ideas. And bring resources. And bring people. I don't want him to worry about me. Getting it wrong because he knows that I'm immersed in the scripture. And my mind is good. He said you are a partaker of the divine nature. But you don't know it because you don't know the promises. You are only a partaker through great and precious promises. It's the promises of God that empower Holy Spirit to work in your life. It's the promises of God that increases your financial stability. It's the promises of God. That gives you your, your value and your worth in this house. It's the word of God. Folks, you may not like me after today. But I'm telling you right now. That we have got to increase in our scripture knowledge. In this house. In this leadership. That when we talk to each other, we talk in scripture. And we have conversations like, girl, you know, I was reading Peter the other day. You really? Me too. And I was over in Hebrews. And what did you see? And what did, that, see, that will eliminate gossip. That, that'll get rid of talk, talking foul and throwing shade. That, that'll get, because we're all on the same page. Come on now. We're talking the word of God. Oh, God spoke to me last night. I was laying in my bed and God spoke to me about John. God spoke to me in, in Isaiah. God spoke to me in Zephaniah. God spoke to me in Obadiah. I was laying in my bed and God started talking to me out of Malachi. Whoa, think about what kind of environment this will become when all of the leaders are 100% immersed in Scripture. I'm making it a priority that between your 17th and your 18th year, we won't tolerate your emotions. We won't tolerate this foolishness. Come on, you're 17, now you're driving. We're not expecting you to, 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 to still be fouling and fumbling. Come on now, you're going from 17 to 18, you're, you're in your senior year. 
And at the end of his senior year, there's a comprehensive exam. You cannot graduate without taking your comps. What would happen at the end of today? Bishop said, well, I got a test for you. And I want you to tell me who wrote every book, what is the theme of every book, what is the occasion of every book, and who was the audience of every book of your Bible. And it is a closed book test. I'm not talking to the, to the, I'm not talking to the sheep. I'm talking to the herdsman. That shouldn't have been your response. You are negligent of scripture. Your knowledge is small. But in the regroup, if we're going to get to revival, then you've got to increase your knowledge of the promises of God so you can participate in the divine nature. There is no exception or substitute for knowing the Bible. I don't care, I don't care where, what kind of conference you should go to. I don't care how many great preachers there are at Full Gospel. I don't care how many great preachers there are at the Dream Center. I don't care how many times you watch me on TV. It doesn't matter until you reformat your mind with Scripture. The Bible says if you do it, you will never be unfruitful. You want money, but you don't know God's principles about money. You want wealth, you want favor, but you don't know God's promises about it. It's so close to you. If, if, if you can see in the spirit, you will see how close everything that Bishop has spoken is to your life right now. But you would also see that the gate that has it blocked is your ignorance in scripture. It is our ignorance that's killing us. It's our ignorance in the scripture that stops us from being what God wants us to be. It's our ignorance in scripture that allows our minds to be disorganized. You want the Holy Ghost, but you don't know the scriptures. What can the Holy Ghost do with you when you don't know the scriptures? How much can Holy Spirit actually do with your life when you don't know scripture? Matthew 22 and I'm finished says, love the Lord your God with all of your heart. Those are your emotions. With all of your soul as your will. With all of your strength, that's your substance. That's who you are in the world. But this is the part we omit. With all of your mind. Everything Bishop Walker spoke is going to happen. But it's predicated on how much of the knowledge of God you have. There is not one promise in this book, 8,000, that you cannot access. The only reason it's not manifesting in your life is your lack of scripture knowledge. And you are the leaders. Everything, Bishop said, the regroup, the reimagining, the reset, and then the revival. But it's got to begin with immersive scripture knowledge. And you must increase your prayer life. But as you read scripture, it will give you an appetite for prayer. And it will give you the language of prayer. I was talking to someone the other day and they said, I pray all the time. I said, how many times have you read the Bible? 
She said, well, I read the Bible. I said, no, 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 you're a great intercessor. You tell me how much you're praying. But how much of the scripture do you read? She said, well, I've never really read the Bible from cover to cover. Then how do you know what you're praying? In one year time, if you will change your mind about scripture, everything this man has spoken shall begin to manifest. The only reason it hasn't manifested is because you don't know the scriptures and you're weak in prayer. And you are the leaders. They told us in Bible school that if there's smoke in the pulpit, there's a full-on blaze out in the pew. If there's ignorance in the leadership, then how will the people survive? I want you to take your two hands and put them over your mind. I'm done. Those of you that are online with me, thank you. I want you to say that right now, I am sorry, Lord, for not knowing what I need to know from the word of God. But beginning right now, in the first three months of the regroup, I call your name. You know, you call your name. I call your name. Corletta Javon shall become knowledgeable daily of scripture and I call your name will increase the frequency of my prayer life and what is happening right now in this atmosphere or in this environment is a shift listen to me and I just heard it this is the new thing. This is the new thing. Whew. I know you are a contemporary church, but I'm going to challenge you to start bringing a Bible to church. Like a book. You, you, you know, like this. I want you to begin to hold it again. I want you to begin to touch it and carry it. It's so far removed from us because now we just go to an app. We don't know the last time we actually held a Bible. I want you to get a Bible. You got your Bible? How many of you have a Bible in with you today? Uh -huh. hold, hold your Bible up. Hold your Bible. As a leader in this house, Bishop, may I give them an instruction? Don't come without your Bible. Every leader of Dream Center whether you know it or not, you walk in here on tomorrow with your Bible. Because we are regrouping. I say we are regrouping. Say it out loud. We are regrouping. We have three months to do what? To regroup. And every leader tomorrow. tomorrow. Not next Sunday. Tomorrow. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. Uh, you might have to go buy one. I, I, I don't care what version it is. Pull it off the shelf and dust it off. Tomorrow, you're going to walk in this room with your Bible. Stand up on your feet. Give me just a little worship music. The collective intelligence that is in this room is amazing. But it is only now hindered.
because we don't know the scripture as we should. But it's changing right now. Our minds will become organized. Our conversation and our behavior is going to change. And in this regroup, Bishop is going to see exponential acceleration because we will all be reading from the same book. I know you don't think it still has power, but it does. I know you think that it's old and antiquated and it doesn't have any relevance. That's not true. It's old because it's tested and it's proven. Whenever I go to preach, the armor bears want to take my Bible. I say, oh, no, 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 no. I carry my own sword. This book has saved my life. This book has healed my body. This book has made me a better person. This book has made me wise. This book has given me favor in over 30 nations of the world. Millions of miles on airplanes because of this book. This is my almost 41st or 48th year in ministry. 48 years, 49 in September. And I'm still booked because of this book. Not charms. Not fads, but the word, the scripture. People say, oh, she doesn't change. I can't. This won't let me. No matter how much relevance you may try to obtain, this has got to be the boundaries and the borders of your life carry through the airport sometime. I just want people to see it. I walk with it like that so they can see it. Say, Holy Bible. When I go through the TSI, I'm, I'm clear so I don't have to go through a lot. I put it in the, in the thing. The lady said, you have to put it on the belt. I said, no, 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 no. This is precious car. I know you don't care nothing about it anymore. I know it don't mean much to you. Got your iPads and got your apps. Got your logos and all that on your computer. But just go home and pick it up. And hold it to your heart. Thy word have I hid in my heart. That I might not sin against you. Just pick it up sometime and put it on your mind. Say, devil, you're a liar. The word of God shall control my mind. The word of God shall control my thoughts. I may not know it like I need to know it, but I put this word on top of my head by faith. And what is in it shall change the way I think. You get in trouble, stand on it. Standing on the promises of God. Standing on the promises of God. The devil tell you what you can't do, you say, I'm standing on the promise. I'm standing on this. This won't fail me. Got problems in your flesh? Pick it up and put it on that area. And say, you will sanctify me. You will live holy. I put it on my mouth so I can stop cussing and stop gossiping. That's how much power even without you knowing it, just holding it, 
just applying it it has power why wouldn't you want this power don't be fancy let's get back to some basics of just knowing the Bible this here is a church folks Dream Center is a church it may be a lot of other things but the one thing that this man and this woman have done is that they birthed a church you cannot have a church of the Lord Jesus Christ without this this is a main ingredient if you don't ever get this you're going to keep cussing each other out you're going to see falling out you're going to keep getting mad at each other you're going to keep disrespecting him. You're going to stay, keep gossiping. You're going to keep doing it. Because of this is missing in your life. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet. It's a light unto my bed. How can a man keep his way clean? <laughs> he must apply these scriptures. So, Father, we thank you for the regroup. Thank you for the reimagining. Thank you for the reset of me. And thank you for the revival that's going to break out in my life because of his word, his spirit in my life. I give you glory. I give you praise. Come on and thank God for it. Hallelujah. Come on. Come on. Open your mouth and say, Thy word. I love your word. Come on. Open your mouth. I love your word. Say it loud. Say it loud. I love your word. I love your word. Come on. Say it out loud. Hallelujah. Now lay your hands on your head. And everything right now is shifting. Room is being made for you to download the Word of God. You're going to add to your faith knowledge. You're going to know the promises of God and how to participate in his divine nature you're going to study his word both day and night and you will meditate on them so that you would know what to do and how to obey God you're going to get into the word and the word is going to get into you the God breathed Holy Spirit inspired scripture it's going to become your compass and your navigational system. And you're going to put away everything that looks like insanity. You're going to put away everything that looks like depression. Everything that looks like immorality. You're going to put away everything that looks like debauchery and lying and gambling. You're going to put it away. Not because somebody laid hands on you. But because the word of God has become your final authority in life and behavior. And Lord, you'll be glorified. You will be honored. And the power of revival shall hit this house. Souls by the millions, both online and in the house. Miracles like never before. Because these, your leaders, have invested in the scriptures. To be or not to be, <laughs> that is the question. And we thank you. Give him praise. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Come on, give him praise. Come on, Bishop. Come on, Bishop.
Come on, open your mouth. Hallelujah. 